In this video, I'm going to show you my favorite technical indicators to use when trading the wheel strategy. Uh, once I have a stock in mind to start the wheel on, these indicators give me a good idea of where to sell puts and where to sell calls, or maybe if I want to avoid the trade altogether. All right, let's get into it. So I believe that with trading, as with most things in life, that uh, less is more and the simpler the better, as long as it's effective. So that's how you know my technical analysis is. I don't use too many crazy indicators and I don't make my chart look ridiculous with a thousand lines drawn on it. I think that's counterproductive. So I have a few simple indicators I use so I can quickly check whether or not I want to enter a wheel trade and where I want to sell puts and where I want to sell calls should I get assigned. So I'm going to show you how I set these up and how I use them and I'm going to do it in thinkorswim and I'm also going to show you how to do it in fidelity. So in case you don't use thinkorswim and I think you should be able to maybe do these in most platforms. Um, I'm not sure but I have thinkorswim and fidelity at my disposal so that's what i'm going to use so here is this a blank chart of apple with no indicators on it and now i'm going to add in the ones that i use and the first one you should all be familiar with is a rsi and let's go down here and type in rsi add this in and the default values are good 14 length 70 overbought 30 oversold and let's keep it like that Okay, so what this is here for, I'm not looking for crossovers or anything else really. I'm just making sure that I don't enter wheel trades when it's overbought. So anything over 70, I just do a quick check. If it's over 70, I pass and move on to the next one. That's all I use the RSI for. And the next one I use is just a simple moving average. You've most likely used this as well. I use a 20 day and I'm going to change the color of this. Okay. And uh, what I use this for is pretty much just, I like to see the slope of it. If it's sloping downward, I don't enter a wheel trade. If it's sloping upward, I could say, all right, I'll enter a wheel trade now. And I check if it is the RSI above 70. If the answer is no, then I look is the uh, the 20 up sloping. If the answer is yes, then I keep going on to the next indicator. So this next indicator you may not have used before. And uh, I think this one is extremely helpful for uh, wheel strategy trades. This helps me decide where I'm going to sell puts and where I'm going to sell calls. So this is obviously very helpful for the wheel strategy. So I go to edit studies and then type in price and go over here to price channel. And what this is, it says price channel is a study consisting of two lines, upper band and lower band drawn respectively through the highest highs in the fixed period and the lowest lows in the same period. So whatever period you choose, it's going to show you the highest highs of that time and the lowest lows. So it kind of gives you like a, a moving support and resistance lines. And I use these for figuring out where to sell puts below and where to sell calls above. So this is very helpful for me. Add selected. It defaults to 20. I like 14. I think it's a perfect time frame, but you could experiment with this. And once you press apply, you'll see the bubbles on the right hand side showing you where the exact values are. So it's extremely helpful. All right. So these are pretty much the only technical indicators I use for deciding if a wheel strategy trade you know, is good or not. So this is what I use. And it's a super simple way just to quickly go through a stock to see if it passes your technical analysis checks. This says nothing of like if the stock is a good quality stock with fundamental analysis or anything. That's maybe for a different video or you have another way of figuring out if you actually like the quality of the company and the stock. But this is just giving you a quick yes or no if the stock is acceptable technically for a wheel strategy trade and where you might want to put those trades on. So let's just, I'll go through a couple examples right here with, with some symbols. So Apple, I would just type this in and quickly see, is it, you know, is the RSI below 70? Yes. Okay. Keep going. Is the, the 20 moving average sloping upwards? Yes. Keep going. Okay. So now if I were to sell a put on this, I would do it anything below 182.59. So if you go to the analyze tab, and then go to like uh, July 21st, that's what I would use. So 182.50, that would work. So this is where I would sell the put for Apple right here. So you see right here, it's a, it's a 12 delta. So it's pretty far away. But as you notice, this is like a, like a self you know, regulating mechanism. Like the higher it goes toward the top line and the further away from the moving average, you'll notice 
that you're going to be getting less premium because, you know, you're getting a little overbought and, you know, the closer you are to 70 as well, you're getting a little overbought. So you're going to be farther away from this here. So you're going to be collecting less premium and the trade is actually less attractive. So this is kind of like, you know, self-regulating as it comes down more toward the moving average, you'll be able to get more premium because you'll become, you'll be able to sell puts a little closer. That's why like when it's hugging the, the, uh, the top value here, you're probably not going to want to take this trade because you're going to have to come down so far that you're not going to collect enough premium and it's not worth your time or your risk or whatever. The, I use this to figure out pretty much where to sell puts. Anything below this is acceptable to me. So yeah, that's how I do that. And I'll go through a few more examples right now. Let's go through Tesla, the fan favorite. All right. So right here, is it below 70? Uh, yes. Is the moving average upward sloping? Yes. Okay, so I would sell puts anything below 240, 70. So I go here to analyze. And anything below 240, 70. So the 240 right here, I would sell these right here. And it's a 13 delta. Okay, and let's go another example. Let's do like Walmart or something. All right. So this one is more toward the bottom line. And so our size below 70 is the 20 upsloping. Yes, yes it is, I, I would say so. So I would sell anything below, what is this line right here? It's like, it's like right at the line. So it's pretty much anything below 153 or 153 or below. So it's pretty much already like at the line. So anything below this, you know, technically you'd be all right to uh, sell puts on, you know, use your discretion where you want to go, how close you want to go to add the money. And do like cat, it's another one I like to do, the wheel on. So this, it's below 70 RSI. The uh, moving average is up sloping. So I would sell anything below 231.28. So 231, so I sell the 230 right here. It's at a delta of 10. This is a super simple way to figure out where to sell puts and say you were assigned and where would you want to sell calls? Well, if you're selling calls, you already have the shares, you know, you don't really have to even look at the RSI or the, the moving average because you're already stuck with the shares. So I would just use this to figure out where to sell calls, anything above this value and you're good to go 250, 89. So if I were selling calls, I'd probably go to, to probably right there and yeah, that's how I figure out where to sell puts and where to sell calls. And now I'm gonna show you how to set this same thing up in uh, Fidelity. So here in Fidelity Active Trader Pro, I'm going to just recreate what I did in Thinkorswim. And just go to indicators, type in RSI. Here you go. The default values are fine, 70, 30. And another indicator, we'll type in moving average, type in MOV, simple moving average. And the red's a little alarming. I'm just gonna change the color. Okay, it's already at the 20 by default. And indicators. The next one, they don't call it a price channel. Just type in high. They call it high low channel. There we go. They have it set to 20. And I'm just gonna set it to 14. You could try it at 20, see if you like that. That's the default for both uh, Active Trader Pro and Thinkorswim, but I like 14 better. Okay. So just to make sure it matches up with thinkorswim, you see the low value is 182.59. Okay, for Apple, it's at uh, the low is 182.59 and the high is 194.48. High here is 194.48. All right, so we matched it exactly in uh, Active Trader Pro. So if you use Active Trader Pro, you're good to go if you wanna you know, use these technical indicators. Now I'm gonna show you how to do it on the uh, Fidelity website. Okay, so here on Fidelity site, they have a pretty cool chart feature. It's like this chart plus thing. So once you type in a symbol, I have Apple here. I'm just gonna go to chart plus. All right, and here's, I actually have <laughs> these saved already. So I'm just gonna show you how I did it. Uh, I just added a moving average here. Just go to indicators. First, let me go down to displays and make sure this mouse wheel zoom thing is off because it's super annoying or else every time you scroll, it just zooms in and out like crazy. So uh, anyway, so go to indicators and just type in MOV for moving average, add a moving average in here. And then once you get it on there, just click on it and set the values to 20 and change the color if you want. Okay, and then for the next one, 
to RSI. Just type in RSI, click on that. And then you could just make sure these are set to uh, 70 and 30. I think it actually comes with 80 and 20 out of the box, I forget. But check, change it to 70, 30. And then for this one, they don't call it price channel. They call it uh, HHV and LLV. So type in high, there you go, highest high value, and, and uh, click on this, set it to 14, and then type in low, and lowest low value, and set that to 14 too. And then if you want to see what the values are at, just go to today's date, and then you see the moving average is upsloping, go to today's date, the RSI is below 70, and then if you look at the the, uh, the HHV and the LLV values while your mouse cursor is over, you know, the over today, then you see the values right there. So high is 194.48, low is 182.59. It matches the Thinkorswim and the Active Trader Pro values. So if you don't want to fire up Active Trader Pro, you could just do it right from the website here. And then once you like your uh, chart settings, just go to Save Chart. I saved mine under the wheel, you know, but you just press save new and then rename it to whatever you want. And then every time you type in a symbol here, your chart will be good to go. So I hope this video gave you some good ideas for some technical indicators you might want to add to your charts when trading the wheel strategy. Let me know in the comments which technical indicators you like to use. My way definitely isn't the only way. And if you want to see more content like this, make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. I'd really appreciate it. All right, talk to you in the next one.